The world's largest commercial ship, Everilot, is as tall as the famous Empire State Building in New York. This mega ship can carry 24,020 foot equivalent unit or TEUs worth of cargo. However, while this giant ship makes frequent trips to Sri Lanka, Singapore and Malaysia, it always skips India. India has 13 major ports and about 205 minor and intermediate ports. Major ports are the ones where cargo ships load and unload cargo. Intermediate ports are like rest shops, where ships refuel and give a break to its crew members. Of the 13 major ports, none is capable of berthing ever a lot. However, Mundra port in Gujarat, managed by the Adani group, has claimed to have the capacity to berth ever a lot. But the ship has so far not berthed there. So why does India not have ports with such a capacity? Historically, India has had a coastline with dredging problems, I mean with depth problems. And for bigger ships, you need depths of certainly of 15 meters. And for the bigger ships, which are called Cape or Panamax or stuff like that, they are they require depths of up to 18 meters. Now, if you go down the list of ports on the western east coast, uh, you will find that depth is a problem and it is somehow being managed by a variety of methods like constant dredging or what is called lighterage, where you offload part of the cargo of a big ship away from the port into barges and then when the ship is lighter and requires less depth, you bring it to the wharf. The total handling capacity of Indian ports is low compared to India's nautical neighbours. The handling capacity is measured in terms of TEUs. While major Indian ports handled a total of 16.3 million TEUs in 2020, Singapore and Malaysia were way ahead. According to World Bank's container port traffic data, Singapore handled nearly 37 million TEUs in 2020, while Malaysia handled almost 27 million TEUs in the same year. India's immediate neighbour, Sri Lanka, which has the capacity to berth mega ships like Everilot and handles most of India's cargo, handled 6.85 million TEUs in 2020. China, India's immediate neighbour, has a handling capacity of whooping 245 million TEUs. Experts suggest that merely having the infrastructure to berth and handle mega ships is not enough. Overall trade needs to be looked at and improved. It is not correct to say that we do not have the infrastructure or we have not been able to develop. It is, it is the function of multiple factors. So one is the infrastructure definitely, but it depends on how shipping lines want to do their network. So these large vessels are designed to serve uh, trades which have very high volumes. So these vessels which are very big need high volume parcel size as we call it. So if you are calling with such large vessels, they need to handle 3000, 4000 TU minimum at per call to justify the port cost which uh, we, we they will be incurring. So not many ports in India will offer that kind of weekly uh, volumes. And another point is that uh, Indian ports we know that our port dues and other tariffs are on a higher side compared to competitors like Colombo and some other ports in Asia. India is now building large ports which will handle mega ships with capacity of more than 20,000 TEUs. It will have the capacity to manage large cargo and transform India into a transshipment hub. Vinyam port in Kerala, which is being constructed by the Adani group, will be operable by 2024. This port has a natural draft of 20 to 24 meters, which will enable it to berth ships. The government has also proposed to build a transshipment port in Andaman and Nicobar Islands with a capacity of handling 16 million TEUs. Recently, the Ministry of Ports, Shipping and Waterways invited expressions of interest for the building of the port. The estimated cost is about $5 billion. Historically, shipping lines have found it convenient to be on the, uh, on the uh, South Asian uh, shipping line, which uh, basically touches Colombo after Dubai. Uh, so, basically, that the biggest initiative India has taken is to develop a massive port on the main trunk shipping line in the Great Nicobar Island in the Andamans, right? So, that, I think, is a decisive strategic step to set up a very major port bang in the middle of established shipping routes. Of, then, of course, will be the challenge of getting shipping companies to use the port and use it for uh, shifting cargo, which is broadly called transshipment. So I think India is now 
making up for lost time. According to an RBI report in 2022, India scored low in the participation index of the Global Value Chain or GVC. India's score in the GVC participation index was 34%, while on the other hand, the score of the 10 member nations of Southeast Asia was 45.9%. Vietnam alone scored more than 50%. Currently, 75% of all cargo requirements for India is handled by ports in Colombo and Southeast Asian countries such as Singapore and Malaysia. Further, of the 75% cargo handling, Colombo handles the majority of it. This shows there is a huge scope of improvement in building India into a transshipment economy. So, how much of an impact does the capacity to berth mega ships have? In terms of cost saving, uh, let me give you let me give you two parameters. One is what is the actual cost saving uh, for, for at least the exim clients, six to 7,000 crores and potential revenue of 70 to 75,000 crores if India becomes a, a, a large shipping hub going forward. In terms of cost saving per ton, you're talking about one to two dollars. I think to, uh, for, uh, for ne next two to three years, the delivery book a 40% of the delivery book is going to be mega ships. And by 2050, you will see uh, more than 50% capacity being handled by ships, which can at least go up to 50,000 TU. Now, when you put all these numbers into place, you actually see the potential loss that we are incurring as, as a country. Uh, you know, uh, this gets coupled by the fact that at least 95% of the cargo movement in India itself is on maritime transportation. And 75% of uh, our cargo inbound or outbound is transshipment. Experts suggest that infrastructure development alone will not solve the problem. Trade is a multifaceted phenomenon and India will have to increase the volume of trade to successfully dock mega ships. Lack of transshipment ports in India is a loss on the exchequer. It's good news that India has taken the initiative to build such a big port in the Great Nicobar Islands. However, it remains to be seen how successful this endeavor will be. If you like this video, share it and subscribe to Business Standard. For more news, views and insights, log on to www.business-standard.com. Do also follow us on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Telegram and LinkedIn.